Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tell Me Why, the program for American Airlines team members. It looks at the why behind the news, information, and everything going on at the airline. My name is Ron DeFeo. I work in global engagement. And today, Brian Zanotin's SVP Network Planning. You're back. How are you? I am back. I am doing great. Big announcement is out. People know about it. Team members know about it. People have written about it. But still, this is always one of the most just highly anticipated episodes of the year. Because the news is out, but people always want a little more. Why? Why we added new routes? What's going on? So we're happy you're back on the program this year. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's dive right in. More flights to Europe next summer. Tell me why we're adding these new routes. Well, we're doing very well to Europe right now. We've been flying um, a lot of Italy capacity, a lot of Greece capacity over the last couple of years. There was some speculation in 2023 that everyone would do there if you're revenge travel, if you want to call it to Italy and Greece in that year, and then 2024 would be softer. But what we saw was in 24, still lots of people going and lots of demand for the flying. And one thing we look at are the number of passengers that are making connections in Europe to places like Athens and Rome. And those numbers are still sky high. So it shows that there's more demand for more flying to places like Athens and Rome. And so as a result, we're going to add Charlotte to Athens. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a great route for us. Um, Charlotte connectivity is fantastic. Gets you from across the country through Charlotte into Europe. And we're also going to add Miami to Rome. Um, capitalizing on those passengers that are connecting in Europe. So we're pretty excited about that. We've got Philadelphia, Edinburgh coming. Um, that's a return to Edinburgh from 2019. Really excited to get back into that market. And the types of travelers we see there are like high-end golfers, obviously people who like scotch and salmon. And then furthermore, with our partner British Airways in, in the UK, we have the ability to tap in to the origin Scotland market and bring those customers through Philadelphia to Philadelphia and through Philadelphia to the rest of the country. And then furthermore, we've got um, O'Hare Madrid starting, and that's a bit of a different one compared to the others. If you think about Edinburgh and Rome and Athens as being leisure routes for us, O'Hare to Madrid is about those partner connections to the smaller points. You know, everyone wants to go to Rome, everyone wants to go to Athens. But then when you look at the different smaller points in Europe that we're not serving nonstop right now, Madrid is a fantastic gateway to get people to smaller destinations in Spain and Italy and anywhere in the Southern Europe, we can connect them through. And then furthermore, out of O'Hare, we've got the capability of connecting those passengers beyond O'Hare as well. So we actually carry a fair amount of passengers who what we call double connect. So they'll start yep, in a place yep. like Milwaukee, connect down to O'Hare and then through to Madrid and on to a place like Sevilla. And uh, so we're really able to capitalize on those passengers with that route. It's Very cool. Exciting. You touched on it. Mm -hmm. We're back to Scotland for the first time in five years. Yep. One of our team members, always one of the biggest questions we get in is when are we coming back to Scotland? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, what's so special about that, that market? Well, like I said, it's got a lot of high-end leisure golf traffic that we can tap mm -hmm. into. Like our partner with BA, getting those passengers through um, from Scotland through Philadelphia and to Philadelphia. So we're, we're really happy to be back in there. And I think as you look forward into 26 and beyond, these are the kinds of routes that we'll be looking to add as well. Ones that can capitalize on our partnerships, serve a bit smaller destinations, and, uh, and broaden our portfolio. And we were talking before we, we, we went on air here, you talked a lot about just building to that domestic feed, right? Mm -hmm. So some domestic additions as well. That's right. Especially to Philly. That's right. So talk a little about the importance of that and what we can see moving forward. Well, Philly is our primary transatlantic gateway. And when we think about routes that we're adding, like Philly to Milan, um, we already serve Milan from JFK, but JFK is not a connecting gateway for us. It's really about New York traffic when we're flying to Milan. So when we add Milan to Philadelphia, what we're really doing is adding Milan to the rest of the country. And that allows us to add, capitalize on routes that we're adding from Philadelphia, like Fayetteville, Arkansas. We've got Omaha, Des Moines. And then on a year-over-year -year basis, we've actually grown Philadelphia capacity almost 20% not only to support these transatlantic routes that we've added, like the ones we added last year, Nice, Naples, Copenhagen, um, but the routes we're adding this year and then we'll be adding in the future. Building back that hub, building back the gateway, we're really excited about. All right, very cool. That's Europe. Mm -hmm. Go completely the other way. <laughs> Japan, upgaging over there. You know, what are we seeing over there that you like? That's right. We're actually optimizing our gauge is what we call it in the network planning world. And so 
we see a lot of demand to Japan right now in the front cabins, mm -hmm. a lot of business traffic. And historically, what we've used on Japan flying is our 787-8, which has our smallest front cabin right. of all of our wide buddies. Right. And it's been just jam packed. And with Japan rebounding and a lot of travelers going to Japan and out of Japan, um, we're seeing a lot of that in the front cabin. And it makes more sense right now on a super long haul flight like that to be able to add more front cabin seats. So we're putting 787-9s and 777s onto those routes, which will allow us to carry more front cabin traffic. And then the Dash 8s that we have will then be redirected to Europe, where there is front cabin demand, but not as much as we're seeing in Japan. So it's always good to optimize the network in that way. And as you recall, we just added um, JFK to Haneda service. Yep. And uh, yep. that's doing well. We're really happy with it. And then it will move to a 787 um, this winter. Wow. Last question. So new aircraft coming in 25. So talk a little bit about that. And then your favorite question you always get is, well, what are we going to do with those planes? Where are we flying? I know you probably won't answer that question. So if you don't mind just shedding a little, shedding a little light on, you guys think through, you know, the thought process that you think about, things you think about when you're, you're, you're building the next locations. Well, I could tell you where they're flying, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> don't do so, that. Um, no, we're really excited to get these new two aircraft types. The 787s yeah. we're taking delivery of are actually the reason we can grow like we are in this coming summer. And so we're not going to use these new 787-9s, which we call the P, which has more front cabin seats than our existing Dash 9s. We're going to use those elsewhere in our network where we see lots of front cabin demand. And that's because those airplanes have big front cabins and we'll want to focus them on that. And so the new routes that we add will not actually be on the airplanes that we're taking delivery from Boeing. And then the XLRs are coming next year yep. as well. Really excited about that. The first one's being built. We're seeing it getting taxied around the airfield out in Europe. Um, so when we take those airplanes, though, our priority is to replace the 321T fleet that flies Transcon. Yeah. Those airplanes are due for maintenance checks, and they need to get converted to a domestic configuration. So we're really keen to get the XLRs in so they can cover for those airplanes right away. And so realistically, we're not probably not thinking about new XLR transatlantic flying until late 2025 at the earliest or 2026. Can't come early enough, but um, the priority is on the Transcon there. Well, there it is. Always a big deal when we announce the summer schedule. And more importantly, I mean, people always flock to this episode to hear some more detail from you. So thanks for coming back on. We'll see you again here next year. Awesome. Talk yep. about 2026. Even more destinations. All right, that yeah. sounds great. Well, look, tell me why it's the place where you go for the news, information, everything you need to and want to know about the airline and what's going on in America. And if you have things you will hear about, want to hear about, want to learn about, want to know about, please do not hesitate to drop us a note on our JetNet page. We will look to get experts on this program to bring you information just like this. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode of Tell Me Why.